approach into Steamboat. And this one you can see here is a little bit steeper at 7.75. In the last video, I wanted to talk about how to use the flight path indicator or the velocity vector while shooting an approach, but I kind of ran out of time. So I'm gonna do that here, just like I promised in the last video that I would. So I'm gonna start off just talking through what it looks like, and then I'll show some of the actual G3X display, and then I'll actually take you into the cockpit itself and we'll go through shooting an approach. I'll be honest, it was not my best flying. Uh, I made some mistakes when I was talking through it as well, so I want to clear up some of those as well here before I get into that video. But as you can see, this is the actual G3X display, and this is what I'm going to show you from this flight in the video here uh, in the second half of this video. And here we've got the flight path indicator. It's coming up over the threshold. What's super cool about the flight path indicator on an approach is that you can actually put the flight path indicator on the glide slope indicated on a approach plate. And so let me just pull one up here. Here's the actual approach plate for Thun Field, which is where I'm shooting this approach at. And you can see it's a three degree glide path. Now in the video, I'm pretty sure as an 100% sure I called a three and a half degree glide slope, which is totally just a holdover from being used to saying three and a half degree glide slope from my days uh, flying in the Navy and the Marine Corps. Uh, but what I should have been more clear about is essentially if you put the flight path indicator on the glide path or on the approach angle for the approach that you're shooting, again, here it's 3.0, it can be different, standard that's 3.0, but it can be different. Here's an approach into Bozeman at 3.2, and then here's an approach into Steamboat. And this one you can see here is a little bit steeper at 7.75. So they can be different, but again, I think the normal you'll see almost all the time if you're flying into normal airports is gonna be a three degree glide slope. So if your velocity vector is above three degrees in this case, you're gonna be climbing. So if you're low, you would wanna push that velocity vector up to get back on glide slope. Or if you're high, you'd wanna have it lower. Alternately, if you're on glide slope and you're seeing the velocity vector hang out below that three degree point, it means you're gonna be getting low on the approach or vice versa. The other thing, and this is what people really love about it, you can see the airport. So in the video here, again, this is the one I'll actually show you in cockpit flying in just a minute. You can see it's actually parked over the threshold of the airport. And so this is correcting for wind. So if you have a crab angle, uh, you know, your display will still indicate, of course, straight in front of the nose of the plane, but the velocity vector will indicate where you're traveling. So you know if it's over the airport there, you're in a good spot. I'll move off of this one and I wanna show you from a different video. So this is from shooting an approach into pain field. Uh, I believe it was for one six right a while back, but you can find this video also on YouTube, it goes through the whole thing, the full procedures that I use when I shoot approaches all the way down to switchology. But here you can see the highway in the sky, we call it hits off and Garmin calls it the pathways system on their synthetic vision. You put the velocity vector through the highway in the sky and you're basically on the glide slope on the way down as well. Super cool feature. And then on this video, you also get a much more clear view of the runway. So as the runway comes into view, you can see the velocity vector going right over it. You have great situational awareness because you can actually see the runway as you're going up to it. And then in this case, over flying the runway and then continuing on. Love, love, love these features on the G3X. Super cool. But with that, let's actually jump into the cockpit here and see what it looks like in the plane. Again, I'm not making any claims that this is my best flying ever, but it'll give you an idea of what it looks like using a G3X, in this case with the GTN 650XI. Let's go. All right, so I wanted to show one more awesome thing about the velocity vector on the G3X that I got asked about in the last video. I actually recorded it on the last one. I just uh, thought the video got too long. So I'm re-recording this just to put a little finer point on it. The winds are better today to show what I'm talking about here. So what I've got going on here is I've got a flight plan. I'm going Chehalis to Buzzbow, then into Pierce County. I'm in a heading now. I'm going to switch that so that it intercepts the nav mode, which it'll do right now. So I'm intercepting this point, and then I want to go straight into an approach. So load procedure, approach. Let's go RNAV 3.5. I'm going to go load approach. And then we'll simulate here that I'm going to Arwell, so I'll go direct Arwell, activate, there we go. So now I'm going to switch to approach mode. I'm at 3,800 feet, so all should be well. 
In approach mode again, simulating them cleared for the approach. Okay, so that's the setup. Vertical track. I am in route to Arwell. Camera just fell down. Okay, I'm in route to Arwell. Got autopilot on. Got everything set up. I'm going to spin this down to 2400, which is the point at Bampo, which is going to be the final approach fix. You can see it right here. I do like to fly this on default nav. The plane's starting to turn in. The way that I like to fly the G3X is once I'm in the chute, so once I'm on final, in other words, uh, when I'm turning on vectors for an ILS, I've got uh, the needle alive, or here, once I'm greater than halfway through the turn to final, in this case within 45 degrees nose heading up the turn, I'm going to go ahead and switch this to full mode. Now what you'll see happen, I'll start slowing down to make sure I'm not getting too fast in the descent. In a minute, you'll see the airport pop up on the G3X page. There it is, right there. And you can see the velocity vector will essentially end up right over the airport. I'm going to slow this down and fly this approach at 90 knots to make this look a little bit more extreme than it would otherwise. The slower you fly uh, with winds, you'll have a larger nose angle. I think that's trigonometry or geometry. I'm slowing down. Autopilot's taking me down. And you can see, my nose is offset a little bit left due to the winds, and the velocity vector is right over the approach end of the runway. So that's another cool thing about the velocity vector. Now, I'm VFR right now, but if I was IFR, same thing. You can see that velocity vector right over the right over the runway, and it's giving you good situational awareness. Something else right now is you can see that traffic right near the airport there. And if I pull it back up to my map page, you can see the traffic it's showing me. Traffic 1,500 feet below me. And it's showing up as a white diamond on the G3X page. So that's pretty awesome as well. So one more cool thing, one more cool way to use the velocity vector is letting it go right over the runway you're going to and I'm flying down the chute as I head down. Velocity vector is on the runway. I know I'm in a good position. You can also see I'm on the approach. It's a three and a half degree approach or about a three degree approach and you can see the velocity vector is sitting about that three degrees below the horizon, which is yeah, one more cross check, one more indication, one more piece of information you can use to make sure you're flying a good solid stabilized approach. Again, love this system. It's just so awesome to have all these cool things, and the velocity vector is by far my favorite part. All right, that's it for this one. In the video, I talked briefly about the approach into pain field, and you can see how the velocity vector works on an approach there as well. If you want to see that full video, which is flying actual IMC on an approach, and as you can see a preview of right here, what it looks like to break out and how the velocity vector looks on the display compared to outside, that video is linked here. Take a look. Additionally, if you had not yet seen or you would like to see the first G3X video I did, which is the precursor to the one that you just watched, this one shows what the G3X does in a low-level environment with terrain. I also talk about slow flight and some other stuff there. Both those videos are linked here. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you are so inclined, and I will see you on the next one.